Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. I suspect a lot of you were probably expecting a World of Warships video today, due in no small part to the fact that me, Captain Jingles, is finally available as a playable commander in World of Warships. The mission, uh, which you can activate on the World of Warships portal, is fairly simple. You just have to accumulate 10,000 base XP in ships of tier 5 or higher, and uh, you get your very own gnome to command your British warships. And while I would dearly have loved nothing more than to have a World of Warships video today with myself confusing everybody by misidentifying ships left, right and centre, um, there are only so many hours in the day and I could either unlock Captain Jingles or get a video ready for Tuesday. Which is why we're watching World of Tanks instead. But I can guarantee you that the second I've gotten myself unlocked, it sounds weird when I say it like that, but the second I have myself unlocked in World of Warships, I will be recording World of Warships replays uh, with a double dose of Jingle's commentary. For today, however, it's Danger Noodle 2142 in the EBR 75 here on Mines, the French Tier 8 armed car. Making an early rush for the hill, something that these wheeled vehicles are incredibly good at doing. Oh, and it looks like he's got some company. And that could be bad news if that guy hadn't already fired his gun. Then again, these things do only have a two-shot autoloader. They don't have a particularly long reload. Did anybody else make it up here? No, I think he's it. It's a real shame nobody managed to hit him. Until now. Oh, now he's taking a beating. Now he's managed to get a kill. Oh, not enough to finish him off. He's going to be reloading. He's not the only one up here. <laughs> I think it might be time to get off the hill. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that was... That was... Well, it's not good. I mean, he's taken a lot of damage and he's been forced to evacuate the hill, but he's not dead. Uh, which I think probably would have been the case if he'd been in anything other than a wheeled vehicle. It's unfortunate that he lost all of that health this early on in the battle, because, well, these things have got no armour whatsoever, and the health bar is your sort of... Well, how crazy can I afford to be meter? <laughs> And, well, he's got almost exactly the amount of health left that can be snuffed out in one hit by a Russian 122mm gun, so he can't really afford to be too adventurous. Still, he's going to try to make himself useful. His team appears to at least control this side of the map. Although, not in any great strength. The question is, can they exploit it? And while he's waiting to try to make himself useful over here, his team continue to hemorrhage tanks. They've lost another three in the space of time that it took him to get over here. With still only one enemy casualty. And he's trying to spot targets for the US-14 off to his left-hand side, but it's just not happening. There are definitely enemy tanks over there, but they're dug in well. The thing is, even if they do spot targets over there, when they have TS-5, the UDES has taken shots at it while Noodle looks for an angle. And the UDES is pretty safe shooting at it from that kind of angle. I mean, its gun is mounted so high in its turret that it's given almost nothing for the TS-5 to shoot back at. But for Danger Noodle, I mean, the EPR is good at a lot of things, but long-range sniping is definitely not one of them. The 75mm gun only has 0.38 accuracy, and it only has 180mm of penetration. With the standard ammunition, which is APCR, 220 with the premium, which is heat. Which means that when you're shooting at a target like that, you pretty much have to well, try to go for the tracking shots and disable it, or wait until you've got the side to shoot at. And you do only have two shots. So there's a limit to what you can do which under the circumstances was not a lot. And of course, in the length of time that it took for not an awful lot to happen, two thirds of the team are dead, there were only five tanks left alive, including Danger Noodle, and anybody with any sense is hightailing it back to the base to consolidate the defence with the tank destroyers. Which is not particularly great news for the Emil 1 up at the foot of the hill, because he's basically been left with his arse hanging in the breeze. I mean, I'm sure he probably wants to fall back, but I'm pretty sure there are all kinds of tanks just lying in wait, waiting for him to do just that. Although, there's one less now. 
not going to be a huge amount of consolation to the Emil one up there. I mean, every little helps, but there's an excellent chance that he's got tanks on three sides that he really rather weren't there. So he's fallen back about as far as he can without exposing himself to flanking fire. And it's not like there aren't machines down here that can assist the Emil at the foot of the hill, um, but they kind of have their hands full with the push coming into the base from over there. So like it or not, the Emil is more or less on his own up there. And if you're in that kind of situation and you want support from the team, you pretty much have to move to a position, and that's what he's doing, where the team can support you. It's no use sitting there crying at your team for leaving you alone. You can see that the team can't move up to support you. It's up to you to move back to where the team can actually help out. The Lorraine's closing in. The team are trying to help out. It's not just Danger Noodle. The P-44 Pantera on the island to the west is also in a position to help, but the Emil's on his last legs. He did what he could. Only one of Danger Noodle's shots connects, but even if they both connected, it wouldn't have been enough to kill the Lorraine, who finishes off the Emil with a cliff dive, just as Danger Noodle takes yet another hit. The good news is that the Ferdinand has killed the Somwa SM, and the P-44 Pantera has finished off the Lorraine, who immobilised himself by crashing into the Emil-1. Of course, the team is still in a pretty much will take all the good news we can get situation, because despite all of that, they're still outnumbered more than 2 to 1, with only 3 surviving tanks against 7 enemies. A lot of those enemies are on very low health. Oh shit, he really? Did he just bounce a shot from the 105mm gun of a Udez 3? 288mm of penetration defeated by 40mm of baguette reinforced French armour. I take back everything I ever said about the terrible armour on this machine. Well anyway, as I was saying, a lot of those enemy tanks are on very, very low health. Depending on who's shooting at them, most of them are one-shot kills. TS5 doesn't have a lot of health. Oh, there he is. Probably going to take two shots. Yes, got him. The Oho is a one-shot kill. Nice, the Ferdinand managed to dab a kill as well. This is good. I mean, they're still outnumbered, but it's not more than two to one. Oh no, the Ferdinand got spotted. I mean, they all know the Ferdinand was there, but now they actually have something solid to aim at. The Ferdinand's doing all right, actually. That's two kills, but he's probably not going to last too much longer. I mean, the Panzer 58 Mutz uh, that hit Danger Noodle... Uh, with gold ammo just now, didn't have it loaded for shooting at an EBR. That was for firing at the Ferdinand. They all knew the Ferdinand was there. It was only a matter of time. Two of them left. Danger Noodles loaded the gold himself, but even with the gold loaded, he's struggling to find a spot on an Oho, who is a one-shot kill, that he can actually penetrate. Meanwhile, ironically enough, if you look at the minimap, the P-44 Pantera has left the position on the island down to the west in order to try to find something to shoot at. If he'd stayed where he was, he would have probably been alright. As it is, he just ran right into the WZ-120 FT and the UDES-3. And he's dead. Which means... Danger Noodle is the last one left alive on his team. He can't go that way, and there's open ground across two tank destroyers that can both kill him with one shot. And... Well, everything left on the enemy team can kill him with one shot. They knew where he was, and they're probably arranging to catch him in a crossfire. So... Well, don't be where they think you are. And that's exactly what he's doing. ISM first. One shot. Got him. The problem, of course, is that this is only a two-shot autoloader. And while he did have the rear of the Oho to shoot at, he didn't have any ammunition left. So he's ducking and weaving, doing the hippy hippy shake. The Oho has shot his bolt. But remember, even with a gold loaded, you have to get a flat surface to fire at. So... He makes sure of it. One against two. Now what do you do? You know that the two tank destroyers were on the western end of the map. Uh, you know you can't kill either of them with a single reload. Now these armoured cars don't have the greatest view range in the world. They're certainly not as good as light tanks. But they're still not that bad, and they're definitely better than tank destroyers. Although obviously not as good as certain premium tier 5 French artillery pieces. So it's not an unreasonable idea to head for the high ground and try to outspot them. And that's basically what's being suggested, and it's not a terrible idea. The question is, can he get up there before he gets spotted? Because the WZ120FT... Nope, has spotted him, and has missed. So, good news, bad news situation. 
The question is, what's the UDES 3 doing? Because that thing can be pretty damn quick as well. And there it is. But the thing about the UDES 3, who it turns out was a one-shot kill, is that it can be pretty damn quick, or it can be pretty damn accurate. It just can't be both at the same time. And he chose to be pretty damn accurate, and didn't get the shot as Danger Noodle went zooming past. And that basically meant he was dead. And that just leaves Danger Noodle, who is a one-shot kill, unfortunately alone against the WZ120FT, who is on full health and has a 122mm gun that can quite literally erase his machine from existence by just farting in his general direction. Now the team are suggesting to him that he should go and cap, force the enemy TD to come to him. And under a lot of circumstances that would be a very good idea. But not now, for a number of reasons. First, this is mines. And that's an enemy tank destroyer based on the chassis of the WZ-120. It's not slow. Even the Oho could make it from one end of the map to the other in not much more than a minute. The other reason why this is a particularly terrible idea here on mines is because that bush is the only cover inside this cap circle. If you're observing the circle, you can't see who's capping. There's only one place where you can be. Danger Noodle's on such low health that if that WZ120FT was to fire a high explosive shell into this bush, it wouldn't even have to hit him to kill him. Which begs the question, why why is somebody firing into the rocks outside of the cap circle? That shot looked like it came from the top of the hill. You can see the cap circle from the top of the hill. If you can't see anything in the cap circle from the top of the hill, but there's a bush, where else do you think the enemy tank's going to be? Clearly the driver of that WZ120 hasn't seen Monty Python's How Not To Be Seen sketch. Mr Danger Noodle, would you stand up, please? Mr Danger Noodle has learned the first lesson of how not to be seen. Do not stand up. However, Mr Danger Noodle has also chosen a remarkably obvious hiding spot. And if he was facing an enemy who was capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, he'd be dead. But he isn't. So he isn't. Oh, there he is. You know, I was almost tempted to give that tank destroyer driver some credit for intelligence here, because if you know that you have inferior view range to whoever it is that you're stalking, that is the best possible angle from which to approach. And yet, he still didn't have his gun pointing towards the only possible source of concealment in that cap circle, so I'm going to go with that was more down to luck than judgement. I do have to confess to a certain amount of sympathy for the position that the enemy tank destroyer has found himself in, because while his machine is by no means a slow and unmanoeuvrable machine, it can't hold a candle to something like one of these French wheeled vehicles. At the same time, though, I mean, come on. <laughs> you knew he was capping. There's only one bush in the cap circle. Where else did you think he was going to be? Danger Noodle, of course. Doing what these things do best. Relocating. Now what's he doing? <laughs> Um, has he just been circling that rock for the last minute? Thinking to himself, I'm sure there was a French armoured car here a minute ago. Oh, somebody's shooting at me from back up the hill. Well, I can't worry about that right now. I've got an armoured car to find. I know he's on the other side of this rock somewhere. <laughs> How is this even happening? Two minutes of the game left. One way or another, I don't think this one's going to be decided by which team manages to cap out first. My money's on somebody dying in the next minute or less, and if you'd asked me five minutes ago, my money would have been on Danger Noodle dying, but right now, I'm really not too sure. <laughs> Two shots? Is it going to be enough? Oh, he's fluffed it, you can tell he's panicking, but the WZ has fucked up the return shot. With the remaining shot, he immobilises him. No idea why the WZ isn't using his repair kit. It can't possibly be on cooldown. Up until now, there has been zero evidence of him taking any critical damage whatsoever in this entire game, but he just sits there, takes more damage, gets immobilised again, still doesn't use his repair kit, and just lets himself get farmed over and over and over. 
I only have two possible explanations for what you just saw. Either the driver of that tank destroyer was too cheap to bother fitting a repair kit in the first place, because as we all know, every credit counts when you're playing a tier 8 premium, right? And based on a number of factors, not least of which the fact that you can actually buy that tank destroyer, you don't have to have any experience of playing World of Tanks to jump into a tier 8 battle with it, combined with the shockingly inept method in which they handled the defence of the cap circle there, I'm inclined to go with option B. What's perhaps more surprising is that the driver of the WZ120 FT wasn't the worst player on their team, which when you consider the fact that that enemy team was actually winning by more than 2 to 1 at one point, that raises some serious questions about the competence of the rest of uh, Danger Noodle's teammates as well. But hey, that's World of Tanks for you. Every time you hit that battle button, it's a whole new adventure. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.